I'm Dr. Scott Cohen, author of Eat, Sleep, Poop. Circumcision isn't clear cut, cut and dry. And it really comes down to a family choice. Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Sears, author of The Baby Book. I chose not to have my three boys circumcised because I felt that they were created that way for a reason. I'm Cara Natterson, pediatrician and author of Dangerous or Safe. If two parents can't come to consensus, in my opinion, the dad should probably make the decision. I know there are moms out there who will disagree with me. I'm due next week, and my husband wants our son to be circumcised. I don't. How do we settle this argument? By the way, my husband is circumcised. It's really something that parents struggle with. They ask questions. They talk about it. I've had a number of families in my practice where they've already had one son who is maybe circumcised and they're pregnant with the second and they're still wondering what they should do. They're considering doing something different for the second child. Parents who are unsure about circumcision shouldn't rush into it. You have at least six weeks to decide whether or not you want to have your pediatrician do a circumcision on your baby. So you don't have to rush into it. Take your time. Uh, you know, take your baby home, enjoy your baby, get to know your baby, and then decide whether or not you want to have your baby circumcised. Currently, the American Academy of Pediatrics says that circumcision is not a medically indicated procedure, and it really comes down to a family decision. And I agree with that, but you should be informed. Circumcision, like any other surgery, comes with risks. Now, these risks may include bleeding, damage to adjacent structures such as the urethra, and even partial or full amputation. Now, the major complications from circumcision have a risk of a fraction of a percent. And the most commonly seen side effects from circumcision is minor bleeding, which can be handled with local pressure and pain. Most of us use pain medicine. There are two types of pain medicines that you can use during a circumcision procedure. One is a cream that you apply to the tip of the penis that numbs the skin. That's called a topical numbing cream. The other is an injectable, and the injectable is placed at either side of the base of the penis and it numbs the skin on the penis. I personally prefer the injectable because I find that the skin cream can cause some swelling or irritation of the skin, whereas the injectable doesn't affect the way the skin looks at all. The injection stings a little bit and it goes right underneath the skin, right around the penis, but it almost completely numbs up the entire penis. And in my experience, many babies sleep right through the procedure. I've even had to check a few babies because they're so quiet, I wanted to make sure they're okay. Most of my babies sleep right through it. They don't seem to feel a thing. And so parents can go into the circumcision decision, not picturing it as a traumatic experience, something that's gonna be very painful for the baby, but, uh, and that should not factor into their decision. Other issues to consider when deciding on whether to circumcise your child are social, cosmetic, and religious issues. Do you want to look like dad? What are the boys going to say in the locker room? I chose not to have my three boys circumcised because I felt that they were created that way for a reason and there must be you know, some benefit uh, to uh, having the foreskin. In fact, there are benefits. There's a, there's a lot of uh, sensory nerves in the foreskin and uh, reports from uncircumcised adult males show that they experience a lot more sexual pleasure from having the foreskin. There's a lot more sensitivity there. And, and I would imagine that most adult males probably really appreciate that. There are some medical benefits to circumcision. For instance, a circumcised penis is easier to clean, and since there's no foreskin there, it can't get stuck when it's retracted. But the real issues that people worry about are sexually transmitted diseases and penile cancer. Circumcision does decrease the risk of certain sexually transmitted diseases, such as syphilis, HIV, and HPV. But it doesn't decrease the risk of others. Now, they're not necessarily less likely to catch a disease from another person if they're circumcised, but he's less likely to transmit that to another person if he was circumcised. That benefit, however, is very, very small and overall is not a great enough benefit, in my opinion, to warrant routine circumcision. What I tell my patients is, it really is your decision. But I think there are a lot of positives to circumcision, that if I had a son, I would truly consider circumcision for him. I've certainly said to my fair share of families, if one person is gonna get a bigger vote, it should be the dad. 
it's the dad who understands what it's like to have a penis and what it's like to live with it, either circumcised or uncircumcised. If two parents can't come to consensus, in my opinion, the dad should probably make the decision. I know there are moms out there who will disagree with me. Have a question? Ask the experts at parentsask.com because raising kids raises questions.